Yeah. Uh, good evening, uh, friends of good evening, friends of science and technology. Uh, today, Birla Industrial and Technological Museum, Kolkata, is very happy to organize online lecture on the topic from art to part, a peep into digital fabrication related to 3D printing. And we have got a very renowned speaker with us. He is from Bangalore. Dr. Guru Prasad Rao he is a director and mentor at Imaginarium India Private Limited. Uh, he is, uh, this company is leading in 3D printing. His current focus is on DFAM for metal 3D printing, 3D printing medical applications, skill development, research technology mentoring, and partnerships across domains. Dr. Rao is a technocrat. With over 30 years of experience, too much, 30 years of experience in living experience, uh, encompassing industry and academia. He holds B mechanical engineering with the PG in tool engineering from GTTC uh, in, in product design from IASC Bangalore and PhD from IIT Mumbai. For his uh, terminal degree, he worked on medical applications of 3D printing. His industrial assignments include Titan, Tanish, Crompton Greens, and presently at Imaginarium. Dr. Rao is associated with many industrial bodies such as CIA, FIKI, NASCOM, IAMF. Presently, he is a part of the CIA National Committee on Design. As CIA Conference Chairman, he successfully led a 3D printing conference 2019 by CIA Mumbai. A little bit about Imaginarium. Imaginarium is a leader in 3D printing and advanced manufacturing technology, housing the largest setup of 3D printers in the country, having processed game-changing applications for over 50 industries. Imaginarium has helped disrupt and manufacturing sector by enabling enterprises to prototype faster faster design, better and realizing products in shorter time span. We are grooming the next breed of makers and innovators for another manufacturing revolution. With these few words, I would like to leave the forum, the dash to Dr. Guru Prasad Rao and Mr. Bana will be coordinating. I welcome all of you. Have a nice lecture and enjoy the talk by Dr. Guru Prasad Rao. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. No, Welcome. Such a generous uh, introduction there. Yes. Uh, thanks for this uh, wonderful opportunity to reach out to the children of the future of India. Uh, thank you, Abhijit Bala, for this uh, wonderful opportunity. And uh, without much uh, uh, delay, I will start my presentation. Uh, today's topic is art to part, a peep into digital, digital, uh, uh, digital fabrication. Uh, when we say digital fabrication, digitization has been happening quite some time now and it is to as you can see an animation r to part is actually converting our dream into tangible things which we can hold in hand right and uh, in fact uh, uh, you know uh, people have been making things you know for, for uh, uh, ages since ages people have been doing things like uh, one of the early products was uh, to store things, uh, making uh, by pinching uh, clay, people used to make pots, you know, to store water, food, and uh, even their wealth, you know. The same thing, uh, people uh, also had, uh, you know, making them like a ring and uh, smudging them, they used to make pots again, another way of making pots. And we all know the potter, the uh, guy who, who uses a, a you know a wheel on which uh, the pots are churned out you know he crafts them by hand as a you know like a late turning a, a metal he kind of shapes the clay uh, in the form of lota or pots what you see and in various shapes and sizes in fact uh, humans uh, were always doing things uh, by hand you know 
uh, the hand is not uh, very good you know to uh, shape things uh, hand cannot uh, put a, a additional energy to shape things you know and we cannot produce a large amount you know uh, because of uh, limited capabilities uh, in human energy also okay and so uh, we know the earlier days people used to do everything by their hands only uh, thus born a cottage industry and soon people uh, started making and selling them but they could not sell many things because uh, large quantities they could make different shapes and sizes but uh, same thing if they want to make some thousand number 2000 number it was not possible consistency was not there and you can see here one of the early imagery of uh, factory this factory has only people and people working in their hands you know so there is no machine here and much later uh, the machines entered factories okay and uh, the machines and hand tools gave additional energy uh, to shape things make things much faster uh, with the advent of you know steam power you know people could actually uh, open large in, uh, you know factories in the cities so this is the one of the early imagery of industrial revolution one okay uh, so people used to have large textile mills where they used to produce not uh, a small quantity but very large quantities and uh, same thing uh, led to uh, you know a, a cart being pulled by a horse was replaced by an engine by henry ford you know so what you see on the screen is uh, the production line at ford automotive it looks like a cow shed actually you know in fact your cow sheds are much better so this is how the factory started you know the line production line and uh, much uh, later with the advent of electronics electrical uh, electromechanical uh, calculator like what you see on the screen now uh, these led to another revolution wherein electromagnetism uh, power and uh, you had the birth of uh, the valves to transistors to microelectronics you know that led to what is known as the computing you know the computing power and uh, uh, with the computing power uh, the man was able to do many things and uh, uh, we are seeing a lot of things around us today and it's all made by somebody who thought uh, they are trying to uh, meet a need you know what we have you know for example during the covid times uh, crisis people came out with lot of ppe kits they came out with lot of masks because there was a need for that you know same way whatever we see in the world today they are all because of some need and design is a process of bringing uh, ideas and ideas that will meet your needs you know that is very important and you can see uh, a design is a highly iterative process where you make things you externalize whatever you have in mind on a paper and then you start to converting that into an artifact you know and this used to take a lot of time you know earlier and uh, people do this you know in the in the industry uh, all over the world through a, a systematic uh, framework called npd npd stands for new product design framework okay what they do they identify a need and this need is uh, put to uh, what is known as a brainstorming or uh, you know synthesis where people generate a lot of new ideas what are ideas ideas are solutions which will satisfy whatever you have a problem the problem is solved by solution 1 solution 2 solution n right and all of these ideas though good they have to be some are very costly some are uh, good affordable so screening happens screening means uh, with a set of criteria you filter the ideas so that you have a manageable one or two ideas then you can decide okay i will take uh, go ahead with this idea then they do what is known as uh, design design means detailing of this idea uh, like idea when you see uh, it needs uh, material it needs thickness it needs a particular shape and uh, who will do it where they will do it all that thing you no know, detailing is done during the design and design 
has to be tested you know invariably when you test it uh, you you cannot test a paper prototype you have to make a, a design idea and you then apply the conditions you expect it to function during the end use you know and that is called as prototype and after this is done successfully if there is a problem you go back to drawing board or you go ahead and implement it that is launch it right so this has been always the uh, you know process all over the world and in fact ideas needs to be tested before hand because the investment what you do for initial idea is very little sitting here you can think of any idea right it doesn't require any kind of investment but the moment somebody says okay let us go ahead and make this idea you need to think uh, because that is going to take a lot of uh, money you know so you can see here the blue curve is the cost incurred curve and the orange curve is the cost committed curve and during concept design uh, the uh, cost is very little as you do detailing detailing could be some computer cost and things like that but when you make it you can see how it is uh, increasing you know and that's why enterprises all over the world they, they when they ideate they want to test the ideas you know and earlier testing ideas was not easy and they used to use different types of prototypes and even during the uh, design stage itself there are various ways a prototype can help for example in concept development people can use prototypes you can make a rough prototype we call it as a dumb model <laughs> system level design even then prototype is uh, used uh, detailed design uh, uh, prototypes are used and you can see testing and refinement there are three stars what are these stars they show the emphasis of where prototype can be most beneficial to us testing and refinement has three stars why because whatever idea you have you have to if at all it is bad you have to uh, know in your idea kitchen in your r and d in your factory supposing you place it in the marketplace who will benefit of course customers will not even know about much of it you know they'll uh, always uh, uh, like to have a product but the competitors will look at it they will improve upon and you are going to lose the competitive advantage so uh, three stars is there because it is very important for the enterprises all over the world we lagatar testing and refinement is done you know on any design and only the one which is most advanced or better could be uh, launched okay in fact sometimes they use it as a strategy you may have 10 different versions you launch one and uh, somebody will copy it when they copy you would launch the second version again somebody will copy so you can actually compete with yourself and be a market leader you know and that such is the greatness of actually having prototypes okay moving forward how we used to do prototypes typically prototypes are all made by hand you know so when you make by, make by hand that calls for some kind of a skill isn't it so you can see the first one is a cash register made of clay you can see the finesse way how it has been carved out right the second one the middle one uh, is a conferencing using unit it is actually uh, made uh, carved from a puff material polyurethane foam though it's not a very good material but uh, you know people have been using it you know to carve quickly uh, so that uh, one can get an idea for the product what they are talking about and you can see uh, the architects they use a lot of cardboard to see uh, the the topology of the land etc and electronics people they for example i was a ham radio operator and electronics uh, enthusiast i used to use a lot of electronics you know uh, whenever we rig up anything it will not work in the first go life is like that you know so breadboard used to be very handy for us we used to put all the component wire them up and check out what happens it is not at soldered you know and this this should function if we, it functions here then we can develop it into a printed circuit board pcb right 
and you can see the last uh, instance where you have a actual screen uh, actual screen is there there's a joystick there are some buttons but outside is all made up with using some cardboard things like that okay so uh, in fact designing or making thing is uh, nothing but toying with ideas you just like a child you have to toy with ideas only then we can create something you know uh, we all have three ego states one is a parent then you have adult and child and the child state is the most creative okay so uh, you should be very careful when you are creating something you should be in the ego state of a child okay very important and with the advent of computers what happened the whole thing became virtual there is no need to model on uh, you know physical thing uh, you know uh, uh, you can do modeling on computer you can assign colors and uh, you know the properties uh, something has to shine it can shine you can also do virtual testing by simulations you can even check the kinematics you know what you see uh, can be tested on a, a computer screen only but will it uh, actually uh, receive any funding suppose you go with a design you say i have tested it on computer it works fine please fund me who will fund you nobody will fund because funding agencies they want to see it work okay and that's where you need to actually uh, make the part and show them it works and it was not easy okay thanks to the new technology uh, we have uh, production technology has come to our rescue Pr production technology can be uh, you know also called as art of making things when we say art of making things there are three different types of them okay one is subtractive where you remove material another one is additive where you join material then you have formative where you just uh, flex it you know it could be like a bending it could be like a crimping or it could be like a drawing you know all of them are uh, formative processes so it is good to actually revisit them because many of you may be knowing things but uh, well, if you want to see what it is in black and white uh, you have now the three columns manufacturing processes or uh, can be largely classified as three different uh, categories what are they the plus are additive processes zero or forming processes minus are subtractive processes so under uh, additive what all we have casting welding cladding painting plating gluing lamination uh, coating and 3d printing so you can see here 3d printing is a, a part of additive process you know additive processes and uh, under zero or forming process you have bending extrusion drawing forming forging coining rolling knurling embossing okay all of them and uh, under minus or subtractive processes you have turning shaping milling drilling planing broaching trepanning sawing reaming grinding filing chipping all of them you know will come and uh, all of them have led you know they've gone through a transformation what we call as a digital digitization of manufacturing uh, with the computers the so called uh, uh, manual lathes have become cnc lathes computer numerically controlled lathes you know like that you can see the journey uh, you know which started uh, early 18th century uh, to today uh, we are stepping into industry 4.0 you know and in between you have industry for uh, two and three uh, which added many things and in fact 3d printing is a part of the third industrial revolution it it comes towards the end okay now we are already stepping into the fourth industrial revolution so we are talking about a, uh, a process wherein the digitization of manufacturing happens with computers where a cad a virtual model is created on computer you know is converted into a part let us see how so we are going to today uh, spend some time looking into this wonderful process some people call it as 3d printing uh, before that they used to call it as rapid prototyping uh, some people call it as additive manufacturing 
as a practitioner i would like to call it as digital fabrication okay now moving forward you can see here a turning or milling what you see is a subtractive process and this process creates a lot of uh, uh, you know waste you can see the chip which is there in the middle uh, because it is wasteful so material is removed you know instead of adding uh, so this is uh, not at all uh, uh, energy efficient nor uh, eco friendly so if we compare the traditional process with the additive process the scrap is less in additive the energy required is also less so we can say the additive manufacturing or 3d printing is a greener manufacturing process so it is all about bringing art to part and let us see how it goes so if you have a uh, doodle like this you know this doodle has to be first uh, the idea sketch has to be made into a virtual 3d model then it has to be triangulated uh, you know called stl then we can print it and how the printing is done 3d printed uh, printing model has to be triangulated stl file it is given to a software where it is sliced you know each slice is put back you know layer upon layer in order to create uh, the object you know uh, so it is like uh, dematerialize it and materialize it you know something like that you can say in fact 3d printing uh, many people think uh, 3d printing means uh, that wire is there wire is going to be deposited you know and uh, but only they think it is a 3d printing some people say no no it is a process where there is a liquid liquid gets solidified they are right some people say no no i have seen somebody uses powder and using powder they make in a way all of them are right correct no it is like blind people looking at uh, elephant not able to uh, you know arrive at calling it as elephant but they saw something which they felt that is right because they were blind same way many of you would have got uh, you know introduced to some form of 3d printing in fact 3d printing has different forms you know uh, like sla stereolithography sls uh, selective laser sintering fdm filament deposition modeling loam laminated object manufacturing binder jetting metal jetting and uh, directed energy deposition you know all of that you know it can happen it's it may so happen some of you may discover a new one why not we can put that also in you know we'll then update this uh, diagram that's all so that brings us to the definition of this technology how do we define it so 3d printing refers to a set of technologies not one okay which help to fabricate you know i'll not say 3d print fabricate 3d object 3D object means it will have a volume and it will have thickness and it will have depth and all that. How it will build, build layer upon layer, okay? One above the other, you know, it keeps on building. And from where uh, it builds, it builds from digital input data. Very important, digital input data. The input could be from a computer 3D model or it could be from a medical image slice data where you have slide you know like echo you have ct you have mri you have all of them different modalities uh, they are basically slice data so somebody thought we can put these slides back get a volume and so uh, medical image data is also useful to build 3d models now coming to uh, scanning you know if you have an object today we can scan scan and get the point cloud data using point cloud again you can recreate the model and hence you can print it so these are the three ways a, a 3d print input data can be got one from the computer second from medical image data and third from by scanning okay moving forward we have some of these are pioneers you know who actually uh, uh, made this technology uh, dr kodama in fact uh, he is uh, uh, he could not get a patent, but he is the one who coined the word rapid prototyping. And uh, whatever he proposed, it was actually done by Chuck Hull, 
he got it patented in 86 so the technology is 30 years old 33 years old right and uh, Carl Decoid, he, he is the one who was a student then. He did his uh, uh, ME project and then went on to do his uh, PhD also at Texas University. He uh, came out with selective laser sintering. Steve Scott Graham, he uh, invented FDM, which is very popular among all of you. Some of you have seen, most of you must have seen FDM. Okay, it is because of him. Well, moving forward, uh, Chekhal, you know, uh, started in 83 and he exposed a liquid uh, to UV light and UV light, uh, when it falls, it gives some energy to the monomer and monomer will have cross linkage when it is exposed to the UV light and it becomes a crystalline solid. And that's how you can see the first mission, what he made and what, what he made as the first part. After this, there is no looking looking back. No, many people have joined this. Patenting was done, so people have to think other ways of making the same thing. So many technologies came up. You know, in some sense, you can see here how the laser source uh, is falling on a a tank which is full of photopolymer. You can see the machine how it looks and the parts made. Here there is a small animation uh, which is. Uh, you can see the laser coming mirror optics is uh, showing it is getting uh, focused on the uh, and part is ejected right so it's called photopolymerization because of light uh, the liquid becomes crystalline solid you know instantaneously and that's how this first uh, 3d printing process was born you can see here how from liquid parts are getting they are lifted you know uh, by the elevation of the platform here the platform is uh, perforated because otherwise it will have resistance like a piston it cannot go inside the liquid isn't it so in order to reduce the uh, viscosity and any kind of uh, uh, forces they have made the platform perforated then came uh, one of the very wonderful processes. Uh, I say wonderful because you can create impossible object using this technology. This is selective laser sintering. Okay. And uh, let us see how it works. You can see the CO2 laser comes from the top. It is exposed to a powder bed and uh, it sinters. Sintering means uh, if a powder is heated and it is under pressure and if you give a little bit of heat it, it fuses right and that's what happens uh, in selective laser sintering it selectively sinters the place you know the, the bed so that you can create wonderful objects okay the powder is fed on uh, two uh, sides with two pistons you know moving up and down a roller spreads the uh, powder evenly and let us see how it actually is, uh, works. So let me zoom here. You can see as we zoom it, the laser actually fuses the interstitial space where the point is, you know, the point of contact is there. It gets fused. It doesn't melt because of which this process essentially gives a porous object. You know that of course you can plug it by various ways, infiltration and all that, but Essentially, SLS gives a uh, uh, porous uh, structure. You can see here uh, how the powder is con you know, compacted and this is how the sintering happens, you know, in actual mission, right? Schematic to actual mission. And how do we clean it? This is called cake. And when we remove, we extricate the parts which are hidden inside because the powder, powder is blown off in order to you know uncover the part which has been centered you know and in this we can create things uh, which are impossible to uh, make you know by any other process moving forward we have the fdm or filament deposition modeling fused deposition modeling 
free form deposition may various names people call and you can see there are uh, you know the material is extruded either by one extruder or two extruders and you get a, a part uh, which is made by a series of spaghetti like thing which uh, is uh, you know which is going to ride on the top of a platform and you can see there is one on the right side a big uh, machine one in the foreground which is smaller one in red both of them they almost produce the same quality only thing is this will work 365 days the large one which works every time on demand the small one you need to be an expert you are you need to be a tinkerer to make it work it will work today tomorrow it may not work and you have to find out how you know that means uh, the commercial models uh, commercially available models are very costly but they uh, they are highly reliable okay when you buy a low cost mission uh, it works just like the the costly one but it may not work the next moment you now you have to find out because of the very basic uh, uh, structure and a uh, lot of things are compromised there you know so uh, it is not very uh, but i think uh, it, it is going to uh, it is also getting better now and uh, many of you would have seen this you know in your maker labs you can see here how this machine a maker boat platform is uh, photographed and being shown to you how the nozzle deposits the part layer upon layer right it is hot when it is made and afterwards we can take it out of the platform moving forward we have another uh, very wonderful technology called laminated object manufacturing this technology was uh, discovered in uh, 92 and by 2000 this technology uh, became uh, kind of uh, the market uh, did not buy this technology and uh, it became kind of bankrupt you know uh, though today also this uh, patent is valid uh, laminated object manufacturing is not uh, really uh, very um, uh, commercially uh, away, you know uh, viable and the uh, market rejected this technology so there was yet another company called mcore in ireland they made the same technology using a different type of approach uh, using knife and paper and some colors and all you can see in the foreground you have a, a juicy orange it is actually made up of paper you know your uh, xerox paper a4 a4 papers you know which are uh, glued together and they are cut in such a way and as and when it is cut it is also printed with color you know borders so when you stack and uh, uh, complete the process you get a, a very colorful object but it was not uh, industrially uh, uh, you know friendly it, it cannot uh, uh, withstand high temperatures nor it can uh, it have water resistance because it is made up of paper and glue and so markets kind of uh, uh, did not show interest so the company had to shut its doors yet another uh, wonderful technology called binder jetting and uh, this this in fact this technology was called as uh, uh, the 3d printing and this was discovered at mit labs in usa and uh, the professor who had he named it as 3d printing for the first time today we generically use every uh, technology as 3d printing and earlier it was trademarked by mit professor okay much later he said okay when people are all calling let me take out my client you know so he gave it to the world so today we can freely call anything as 3d printing thanks to mit professor you can see here a liquid adhesive is put on a platform and uh, on the platform you have powder like gypsum powder or stone ware powder okay and that uh, when you put the glue it kind of becomes solid and uh, uh, only that area it becomes a kind of sheet and if it is done over uh, and over again you are going to get a object and what you see here uh, in the foreground is a part made by this process very colorful again here because it is using glue uh, the strength of this is not very high sintering is different sintering there is a 
at a uh, very fine particle uh, level there is a adhesion and uh, there is a fusion right um, but here it is only kind of uh, glue is uh, binding it and so when i drop it it will break like a glass you know it doesn't have any strength so industrial applications are less so people can uh, make use of for marketing models study models for toys uh, for medical for example they want to uh, see the part in color um, probably they can use this but it doesn't have any industrial application we are seeing a demo of this you know uh, you can see how uh, they are trying to build a house you know let us again see it will continue again you can see here layer by upon layer the walls are built then they suck out all the powder and those which are glued they remain and they give you the part that is a house right and that's what uh, we call it as binder jetting and uh, and this was called as 3d printing and we have yet another uh, very wonderful technology called material jetting as the word says material is jetted not the adhesive here that means it is going to make a small you know uh, some kind of uh, 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 piezo uh, hammers will be there. They will push the material, and in a small drop-like thing, they fall on the platform. You know, kind of, and they are cured at the end. UV cures them, and again become solid. So here, UV uh, wherever light is used, you can be sure it is a photosensitive material, right? And what is the beauty of this uh, technology? Uh, this can make hard to soft and transparent to opaque in one go, right? And you can see there is one uh, here, there is a module in the center, uh, which has got a O-ring, which is very soft, which has got a lighter, you know, uh, uh, half-white uh, manifold, which is very strong. And it has got an actuator in the bottom, which is uh, hard inside and soft outside. You know, like that, we can play with the properties of this. And uh, uh, this further, you know, you can see how uh, this is uh, working. Like a toothpaste, no? The, the pink ones are the material that are deposited. Green is the UV light. You can see after deposition, the green light uh, comes and it sinters it or not to cures it you know it cures it and that's how in binder jetting and in uh, metal jetting uh, the printer works so it is just like a xerox or uh, you know um, your color print head only that uh, here the z axis keep on uh, moving up so the head will move up you know uh, so that's very important you can see here how powder bed and uh, there is one more called uh, uh, HP uh, metal jet or fusion, multi jet fusion works. Uh, some of them uh, are very fast because of the way they work. You know, in a, a typical laser, a laser had to make several kilometers to make a part, while on the right hand side, they are all coming at a time. You know, so. Uh, th that will make the industrialization of this technology much faster because industry needs things which are faster and cheaper, you know, always. There is yet another technology called directed energy deposition where uh, you can use, uh, you know, the people use uh, like a welding, you know, high uh, energy beam is used in order to melt uh, locally. And that's how they actually be able to make uh, parts, you know. And uh, you can see here how the melting happens. Unlike in uh, SLS, here uh, the uh, laser beam actually has a uh, melt pool, you know. Uh, so there is no industrial space here. There is a melt pool. And uh, of course, uh, this will be a very hot uh, process, you know. You can see here in metal we also use sintering so this is a sintering process where after uh, bed is uh, you know compacted a, a laser comes from the top it is uh, 
uh, you know the fiber lasers uh, which give very coherent uh, high energy uh, beam and that is exposed to these metal and the metal powder they melt easily in order to melt a large amount of metal you require a lot of energy here because metal is in the powder form of powder very fine powder of 20 to 80 microns of various uh, uh, proportions they kind of melt because they are very small they can melt at a, at a much lower temperature you know and with the laser which is coming with a uh, very um, a, a small spot there is a small heat affected zone you know by which they can actually uh, make this possible so nowadays we also have uh, different metals which are being uh, you know uh, mel uh, melted by using laser beam so there are two nozzles nozzles are carrying powder while the center nozzle is uh, carrying laser beam and uh, the as the powder come in midair they become uh, molten drop of metal and they get deposited and that continues the process continues to make the metal parts so you can see some of these are metal uh, 3d printing machines we have and uh, you can see here this is a robot right it's a KUKA robot and you have a injection like uh, uh, dispenser there which is having red clay and it is getting deposited now, can we call this as a 3D printer? Yes, indeed, this is a 3D printer because it is creating object layer by layer. It is getting uh, input as a digital data from a computer and it is building a physical object. So this is definitely a, a 3D printer, but 3D printer, the earlier stereotype of a box and all is gone, right? Here you have a robot it can in fact create uh, all around you know it is like a your pani puri wala he makes pani puri dahi puri uh, sev puri and what not all types he will give you know in one guy so same way this part this cooker robot can actually uh, create a object here object here object here all around it so in some sense in future you know such things could be even more and you can see here, this is called as a 3D doodler. Okay. What does it do? It is like uh, your FDM. It is like your FDM, filament deposition modeling. So what is the price of this? It's about a couple of thousand rupees. In the early days, it used to be 8,000 rupees. Now I think it is available for 1,000 rupees, 2,000 rupees. So one can gift it, a, a perfect birthday gift for someone. Uh, not too small children but uh, you know because it has got a hot tip uh, so it's like a glue gun using this you can create wonderful things so let us see how it works you can see here hot tip by which people are able to make things building castles in air right and in fact uh, can the can we call this as a 3d printer well by definition no because here, there is no digital input data. Whatever is coming from your mind and hand is uh, depositing, it is okay. Hand or uh, leg, it doesn't matter. But definition says 3D printing is that technology wherein digital input data is given, you know, to a machine. We can call it as a robot also. You know? 3D printer is a robot only, right? It uh, You don't have to worry about the skill of how to make a part. You make a part in the CAD and uh, you process it and give it to 3D printer, 3D printer will print it. You know? So it has to some extent de-skilled, you know, um, uh, making of products. You can see here how a robot is actually uh, depositing things at an angle and orthogonally, you know. So, uh, even this is a 3D printer, right? So can we say Lotu is a, a 3D printed one? No, it is additively made, but not 3D printing, right? It is additively made because so many boondies are there. They're put together, made into a ball, you know? This is like sintering, you know? Sintering is, this only is sintering. 
and we also have you know if you have sandwiches which are put one above the other it's also additively made right sandwiches are uh, additively made layer by layer but it is not 3d printing very important now in fact uh, adrian dr adrian and his team they proposed something called as uh, 3d printer printing itself you know and they started a program called uh, replication uh, rapid prototype project called riprap this led to the commercial uh, you know make about and all that you know so the technology became a open source uh, from uh, 2009 onwards uh, it became available in internet you know you can google search you can download and you can make your own 3d printer of course they are all per, uh, referring to one particular technology called ftm or filament deposition modeling and in fact people uh, have been uh, toying with this idea printer printing itself so so much so a lot of cartoons like this uh, which came today we have the same, same technology in all shapes and sizes okay you can build a 3d printer and you can build a company and you can sell the machines you know this patent is now there is no patent for this patent of course there are patents but uh, it has become open source that means you can uh, not only make it improve on it in fact the makers of the world have improved this technology today um, the uh, the so called inventor made it at 178 micron now people are making it for 50 micron also accuracy i mean so uh, the makers have built and improved the technology and that's what happens with open source and today this technology is making deep inroads to almost every sector you can think of jewelry medical fmcg packaging lifestyle architecture automotive aerospace then you have uh, uh, you know electrical electronics white goods plastics and many more in fact this technology truly brings things which are impossible to even think can you imagine these products what you see on screen they are truly unimaginable and impossible to make but for this technology you know and that's where they add value to uh, these artifacts what you see here so let us see how this uh, why people like this technology the technology it will take time it is costly and uh, in all that you know you cannot make millions in this and all that are there what is the strengths of this technology the strength of this technology are its part consolidation if there are 20 parts you can make it into one part with the same functionality so you have a box a top hai dakkan and bottom portion okay you need a hinge for that other side you need buckles uh, to uh, latch it or latches and you need uh, you know a lot of screws and rivets to secure it and you need a hinge and a hinge will have a hinge pin you have a hinge plate top and bottom and they are again secured by so many screws that means it some 20 30 parts go uh, to make a box you know and today thanks to technology we can make it as one just one what is the bill of material just one then we can make quick jigs and fixtures electronics is one area where miniaturization is happening every week every week something ch changes there so you cannot have a investment into jigs and fixtures which are cast in steel you know so they make it out of uh, plastic quickly and they use it you know? so uh, it has become a great uh, uh, enabler for uh, you know quick changes that are there in the electronics market now coming to need for light weighting light weighting comes in uh, wherever uh, you know when something is airborne like aeroplane spacecraft you have to um, every gram no you, you you pay for what every gram there you know because it is something floating in air and it goes uh, you know above and uh, to even the outer space you know uh, so uh, weight uh, the payload becomes very important so in order to reduce that what they do they make it hollow like a sponge 
so they make structures which are high in strength but uh, uh, very uh, lightweight you know and so we also do it in gold no uh, people want to show more gold uh, don't want to pay for it so as a result what they do they scoop it scoop it scoop it so you don't have a solid gold you know, which is also very heavy <coughs> then of course complexity uh, additive manufacturing or digital fabrication or 3d printing uh, can handle any type of complexity and so jewelry indian jewelry if you take india is the uh, world's largest consumer of gold for jewelry okay and uh, you know you're all uh, from calcutta and you know calcutta is full of karigas they are famous all over the world i used to have a lot of friends you know uh, when i was working with tanishk uh, we had ratan karmakar tapan sardar uh, boblu mandal and all those people all from 24 parganas or hugli and those places you know uh, we are still in touch so uh, you, you know in um, you know uh, in calcutta there do lot of gold right and so complexity is very high and this technology can handle it so we will we'll used to say the babus who came and did a uh, lot of these they have become now the babus have become kind of uh, uh, digital babus now the children are actually making 3d printing you know so the jewelry uh, the way it is made it has changed forever because of the new technology and uh, you see in the middle need for one part so supposing somebody wants only one part then you cannot manufacture it or if you manufacture also you cannot call it as a manufacturing manufacturing is making millions not one right so when you make custom make anything you can say fabrication that's why i call it as digital fabrication you know like fabricating your uh, gate or your grill for a house is done by uh, uh, artist you know the, the grill worker right and you tell him i want this design so he'll make it you want your name on it you he'll make it and give it so it's a fabrication so digital fabrication is by the enablement of digital tools such as computers cnc and robots and 3d printer if you create anything that is digital fabrication right and uh, the last one but not the least uh, the need for customization supposing in fact i had one uh, uh, account uh, guy from calcutta he met with an accident this was way back in uh, 2013 and uh, doctor called me you know at hinduja he called me and he said uh, we need you we, i heard you're all doing 3d print so uh, next uh, thing i did was to see the patient the patient had uh, a large portion of his skull taken away you know and uh, he was in uh, deep uh, pain and uh, some cons uh, you know uh, what is called as confused consciousness okay and uh, uh, thanks to the technology we could actually make a nicely fitting dakkan you know for his uh, uh, um, skull part which was taken away was uh, replaced made of titanium which is an inert material a metal uh, as an implant and today this guy has gone back to his banking you know he's there somewhere in calcutta you know uh, not everyone will come back and say hello we, we you know, 3d printing is great because he is busy you know and he, he has been uh, very successfully rehabilitated so need for customization uh, like in medical and all are very good uh, you know uh, for uh, so 3d printing has uh, some of these uh, uh, virtues that's why we use them very important moving forward we have uh, you know a typical case of industry g leap fuel nozzle tip uh, which is uh, highly quoted you know i again want to quote it, it the part consolidation one part from 20 parts because of which it is 5x durable five times more durable its weight is 25 percent less because there are no excess uh, uh, washers and nuts and bolts 30 percent cost effective because 
uh, it has no those small things which used to go it is not there unnecessary extra uh, you know operations are not there and because you can make it on demand you don't have to store it you know as a, a spare part you can on demand uh, you can have a digital uh, spare you from digital uh, spare uh, you know you can recall and re you can print it whenever you need it so there is a 95 percent inventory reduction inventory means you make and keep make and keep as a spare so uh, because this can be produced on demand there is no need for storing it so you keep a digital model like a file and whenever you need you recall it and print it that's the beauty of it you can see here how some of these bracelets are made they are linked okay one side they are studded also the other side they are enameled also you know and i am talking about the first one where back side you can see enameling the second one is actually white in color but it can be colored in any uh, uh, color uh, like what you see here is uh, a deep crimson and it can be any color like that you know we can actually have so these are all produced without assembly you know they are produced in cad the same thing is uploaded into the machine it comes as an assembled part so you have uh, assembly uh, as a activity is not required of course finishing is required which are all done by various automated processes so 3d printing people have tried to print big things you know uh, this is a castle you know in usa they built in 2014 and people also have tried to print very small like this one is the iit karakpur main building you can see here in the bottom there is a green scale which says 20 micrometer right and uh, this 20 micrometer if you see some of the very boric lines jo hai very vertical and horizontal they are less than a micron okay and uh, that is the beauty of it where you use such things people are thinking of making small bio boards you know uh, which will go inside the body you swallow it and it delivers the drug to a particular organ which they know and they'll come out you know such small actuators you can make using such micro 3d printing in fact we saw you know what it can do even a small printer what you see in the foreground can do a mammoth product so like a lego you make uh, digital uh, sections print each section put them together you know like a lego and uh, you get the entire part so many printers today though they are not very big they can do big things you can see future industrial uh, um, floor will look like this no grease no sound you know all these machines they work 24 by 7 365 days and energy is less required and material is added you know added not subtracted so rejection is less so we are actually going towards a very sustainable manufacturing in future you can see here 3D printing uh, have no economy of scale. That means I cannot print one million. You know, sasta nahi kar sakta because they will be of some standard price that will continue. You know, maybe something very slow. You know, very small gradient. You can see the red line that shows uh, that slight improvement, but not much. Complexity, on the other hand, in the conventional complexity. Uh, you have a limit how much complex you can go for now one number two as you become complex as the part gets complicated uh, the price also gets higher whereas in 3d printing no matter whether you make a cylinder or a complex part it doesn't demand anything you know? so complexity comes for free let's say you can see here you know how conventional and additive are compared you know the cost uh, in uh, a product in conventional it keeps on increasing with complexity and wastage keeps on increasing also and on the other hand in additive you can see there is a 
fixed cost which keeps on going no matter what you do and rejection you see rejection wastage is also very limited no not much uh, whereas in conventional it is much more well moving forward we have uh, uh, one more very important feature of uh, additive manufacturing because it is a layer by layer uh, stacking uh, when the stacking thickness increases you know you can see uh, it, the definition becomes less so finer it is finer is better always 2d is a pixel uh, 2d uh, pixel you know in uh, in 3d we call it as voxel and as you can see when the voxel becomes fine uh, you are going to get a better resolutions again it is repeating here uh, the thinner sections are always better than thicker sections you can see here a uh, thicker section and a thinner section how they make uh, again a 2d pixel 2d we call it as pixel in 3d we call it as voxel okay and uh, again here also as the voxels become smaller definition is better right and coming to uh, the where exactly we place the technology so for volume you use the conventional manufacturing like injection molding die casting uh, when you have a very large volume when the volume gets reduced you can go for investment casting or vacuum casting still reduced you know you can go for cnc when the complexity is very high you can go to 3d printing but you can see the volume volume wise 3d printing is in the lowest complexity wise it is the highest so we have to play with the strength of this technology very important and uh, with uh, 3d printing one can also make a 3d master pattern using that we can cut a mold and we can create a number of replicas you know so i'll show you some replicas what we have taken out uh, you will be able to appreciate you know uh, so here i have uh, you know you can see this is a, a solid model uh, which is made up of plastic. This is a translucent model. Can you see there? I'm not sure whether it is clear or not. So these two are uh, vacuum cast. And uh, we can also make it in metal. You know? So you can see these are metal. You know, this is silver. And this is not gold. This is uh, golden. This is a brass model. You know? It is an elephant motif. What you see here on the screen, same thing you can see here, right? Well, and in fact, technology as it is emerging, uh, there is the emergence of new aesthetics. The capability pushing people to make things which are something like this, something like this, something like this. You can see there is no light here. Light is in the bottom. What you see is the effect of light, which is uh, you know lighting up the tree. And uh, this is not vacuum cast. This is not injection molded. This is not die cast. This is not CNC milled. This is 3D printed. So such artifacts actually uh, push the boundary of uh, what you can imagine. Okay, and uh, uh, people designers can freak out you know, with the things what they can create. See, this is uh, a shoe. So this is made up of rubber like material, so hard base. So it's very comfortable to wear this kind of shoe for walking. You can see again here, hard base and uh, very soft uh, top. You can see here again here, uh, the structure, you see how it is made, the high heel is made. You can see people are really freaking out with the way they have also made it lighter by making it porous with voids. You can see the spectacles. Again, they are made lighter, look thicker but lighter because the voids they have created with these meshes. You can see one more, one more. The bag, entire bag is printed, you know, including buckle, including the, the hinge. It's all 3D printed directly. You can see this. Again, it's 3D printed all in one go. It is not assembled at all. 
in fact uh, mathematics you know uh, mathematical equations when you try to use them uh, and you start seeing uh, various forms like what you see on the screen uh, they export it and then they mirror and they export the whole file and they print it you know so this looks like a mount babu or belu halebi uh, sculptures but uh, they are actually uh, made from an equation the mathematical equation you uh, substitute n is equal to 1 2 3 like that you know these are polynomial equations which are uh, you know uh, truly um, rendered on screen exported as volumes uh, to get this kind of uh, artifacts the future habitat the houses they can be something like this so it is a concept you know by force fitting animal and furniture you know you you can also have uh, various artifacts like the one what you see here you can see same thing at a different angle you can see unmistakable animal here yes frog frog legs are taken and uh, furniture is force fitted they combine the two you know the for frog leg is taken by scanning they have taken into the computer they have merged another uh, uh, furniture cat to fuse them and then they 3d printed you can see uh, the structure what you see is so complex you see only in nature such objects you know a uh, corpus go up uh, if you take a corpus and uh, you see it under microscope you see something like this uh, so even our bone inside is something like this uh, so these are structures which are naturally occurring you know not possible to make by injection molding and all that but uh, thankfully for um, for the new technology this is possible so you can see here jewelry is a piece of fun not piece of gold anymore you know it truly freaking out with the way these are made in nylon uh, sintering right see this one see this one see this one let us see how this is made you know with a resin like thing what you saw some of these are uh, truly amazing creations right and uh, these are kind of hybrids because we print in wax and then cast in metal you know you can see the fluid uh, you know lot like thing in a choker which is actually made up of nylon is shown here in fact sky is the limit in fact sky is not the limit you can do any form anything so in future design will lead the consumption manufacturing would be taken for granted because the manufacturing which was supposed to be a highly skilled job is getting made by uh, some of these machines you know so in future uh, the manufacturing is going to get disrupted by uh, some of these uh, technologies the future of 3d printing of course is to make real things things for end use okay so we can actually see the trend you know in 86 what we could make was only mock up model in 2010 we can make products which are testable okay and uh, in 16 uh, onwards we have been making end use of parts so it is becoming a kind of a option uh, for bulk manufacturing you know what are actually helping this adoption to uh, actually uh, make 3d printing uh, um, you know entering the manufacturing it is the solution price if it has to be low and the speed has to be fast so some of these hp jet fusion what you see here they are low in price you can see price say there then speed speed is there much higher compared to the rest what you have on the left hand side so uh, it's very important to play with the strength 
and uh, it is slow and steadily becoming an option for manufacturing. You can see here rings. We have seen it earlier also. Light weighting. Uh, these are rings not made of gold but by nylon. The sole uh, for a footwear, which is custom sole. You can see here, interestingly, a metal part is getting replaced by a multi-jet fusion part. You know, only retaining one small little bit of metal, the rest have been converted into polymer. It's good, isn't it? You can see some of the complex parts. Very complex part. And uh, people have also used, you know, this blowpipe what you use in your uh, birthdays. You know, uh, the same uh, technology uh, is used here to make a tongue. You know, let us see the actual uh, application. When the compressed air is fed through the pneumatic system, uh, the loop will flux, making the tongue uh, point to come closer and secure and hold apart. You can see in the right side how it is picking and placing a uh, component. This is a truly compliance mechanism. Compliance mechanism is going to do away with springs, you know, such things. As far as material is concerned, we have a lot of material to choose from, polymers to metals to sand. And again, polymers, uh, we can have uh, thermosetting and thermosets. And then we have metal. You can use uh, uh, various forms. Uh, there may be different definitions, but uh, one and all, I mean, they, they are all the same at the end of the day. They all are very similar. In binder jetting, they use uh, sand and uh, they make uh, sand boxes, core boxes and all. And that is another technology which is there. You can see here, thermoplastic share, photopolymer share, and where is our metal? Metal is very small, isn't it? Metal is very, very small. So that's why we don't see widespread uh, adoption of metal, but it is slowly and steadily that is increasing. So if you look at the broad spectrum of what we are looking at, you need to have an idea, and that idea has to be converted into a CAD. Without CAD, we cannot do anything. We cannot 3D print anything. And we cannot 3D print anything without any material. So what you see here is animation where the digital manufacturing opportunities we are trying to explain. After 3D printing, something has to be processed, you know, like painting and all in your world of opportunity. So let us uh, um, learn about some of the industry case studies. OK, before that, we are showing the speed here. What used to take 11 and a half hours as a SLA? Today, with clip, we can do six and a half minutes. So that is the kind of zipping that is happening. So some of the models before painting or after painting. Sorry, uh, this is something called as a um, pattern, uh, wherein the blue ones are all wax. We have filled wax here, an impeller for a submersible pump. And uh, this whole thing is burnt out. And we are going to then cast metal into it. You know, it's a sacrificial pattern, wax pattern. One more. These are handles, you know, different types of handles. This is glass filled nylon material, which is having high dielectric strength. And they're also very strong. And uh, you have, uh, uh, they, they, they can be seen uh, in electrical goods. These are some of the gears, OK? A wear and tear uh, uh, material. So they're they are able to. Uh, Pull this off because of the uh, materials, materials what they have, 
like peak and all are better than steel you know peak is some eight times more stronger than steel so if you use such material um it's very advantages so this is a vacuum gas uh, design you can see some of these are grills which are made by 3d printing this is a side door of a car what you see here the whole thing is built as one part they can also be made in two parts and uh, attached you, know, you cannot make out once you in fact this is made into two halves you know right and left is a dashboard you know and it's relatively a small dashboard like auto rickshaw you know size and uh, you can see how beautifully the whole thing is made same way we have a glass field material and silicon casting material this is sla material these are some of the mirror optics what we can see or also plateable these are some of the meters at the electroma exhibition and uh, what you see here bio bio breast breast exam as it says it is for the cancer detection of the memory glands okay uh, what do you have here and this is a kind of a uh, manifold again some more mirror optics amber color and red color uh, we can see here here i want to show you something which is very very interesting uh, we got the design to make this but the material outside what you see is a infant skin friendly so uh, we had to actually synthesize a chemical uh, along with uh, a scientist and uh, who gave a recipe to arrive at is yes, uh, you know a, a composition or a recipe uh, which is going to give good uh, uh, you know uh, feel of product at the same time the one which is not allergic to infants okay uh, so we also do a lot of uh, such small developments of the part of day-to-day uh, uh, -day operations in medical we have uh, application of 3d printing at five different levels at zero level we have devices at level one we have anatomical models level two we have guides and fixtures three we have implants which are going inside your body and finally tissues and organs so this is somewhere in uh, still lab uh, people claim that they have printed many organs but uh, believe me Nothing is done so far to test on the people, on the person, you know. So it's very important to know that. It is not true. Somebody uh, has actually made a, a heart and things like that. Now, people are toying with the idea that is very important. You can see here functionally graded material. I can keep on changing different material to get the property or I can make it in a different uh, shape and size with the old material right so people nowadays are looking at aping the human body more closely so they're uh, trying to make things which are having voids so they can uh, have a, a, a rough uh, outside bare resistant outside but very ductile inside so here you can see any technology if it does not bring a smile it is no technology you know so here you can see a lady from gujarat she had also uh, had the same problem cranial implant had to be made customized to her and it was so she came to our factory and gave a testimony that uh, how it has changed her life and incidentally she's a science teacher who met with, met with an accident and doctor said we can fix her only if we have a implant try something you know so first call came to me and rest is all history now uh, the first one came from calcutta 
an accountant who had lost his uh, cranial plate now we have done so many uh, to prove the point in fact 3d printing uh, is not affordable by everyone you know and uh, the small designers individual designer maker or artist will go for a community common facility or something like a workbench you know, or maker asylum or uh, some such thing where people have all the tools you go and you do experiment you do the creation whatever you know and so many of them in future will depend on the cloud factory okay we have a cloud factory that means you have a file you upload and get your uh, quotation and then uh, we go ahead and make it you can see the dexterity of robotic arm also has increased thanks to 3d printing what it can do for you you know it can increase the accuracies we can also do with advanced mathematical modeling uh, ai uh, we can do the optimization using optimization algorithms genetic algorithms you know um, the so called uh, topology optimization all of them are uh, our future of this technology you can see here you can go about making different uh, scenarios you can build and uh, you are going to have uh, wonderful new things coming you know as and when like in a kaleidoscope you you turn the uh, kaleidoscope at every turn you find a new design something like that is going to be there for future you can see here this is a building facade uh, where they are trying to deploy some of the closing windows by a kind of a compliant mechanism can you see they have to control the sunlight inside the building so what is the future of 3d printing hardware scope will be uh, soon saturated the material and uh, you know uh, new material new software uh, which will be skill all of them are going to be the future right and uh, everything will go to cloud you know you will not be able to see physically things but somebody comes and delivers something to you that's what happens you can see here 3d printing today as we are discussing tomorrow it may become a, a kind of a commodity you know so no more no more you actually um, Uh, what do you call uh, need to uh, focus on this hardware you have to focus on software and the materials very important i can see in the future is hybrid manufacturing uh, the best of uh, robots cnc and 3d printing will be put together uh, to action this cocktail will be the future of manufacturing and uh, uh, we can see in industry 4.0 which is future additive manufacturing is or 3d printing is a important uh, uh, player and uh, it brings the physicality to the cyber physical system okay very important what you see here is a fleet of things at imaginarium in bombay you reach our office you reach the world of 3d printers they come in all shapes and sizes they each one have their own capabilities and so we love all technologies you know and uh, what you see here a robotic arm is actually building a rocket propulsion tank you know in in steel you know these are some of the uh, exotic materials molybdenum vanadium uh, titanium and all such exotic materials are used to fabricate these fuel tankers and uh, it will be put on board a rocket right this is from relativity which is a competitor to your spacex okay i think with this we come to the end of today's presentation hope you enjoyed the way uh, things are uh, built using a digital fabrication technique imaginarium has different verticals starting from jewelry Uh, engineering rapid and you have a venture fund you have an academy 
you have uh, solutions which are going to sell hardware and software and we have imaginum life which is mostly focusing on patient specific implants okay i think with this we spur the industry you know that is very important uh, this is my phone number and you, you have the email id there website if you go to the website you can see a virtual tour of the place with a vr gear you can actually see that so if you have any questions i would like to take now with this i'll push it back to uh, our uh, host i'll stop sharing okay back to you uh, bala how was it it was wonderful sir thank you for giving a wonderful pre uh, presentation and it was our opportunity like one of the pi pioneer in 3d industrial printing has delivered the lecture himself so i thank you a lot sir thank you for uh, uh, taking through the technology how the 3d printing has been done and uh, how does this one fabrication and other challenges we fulfill through 3d printing basically as you said like uh, developing a, or manufacturing a single part it's really difficult and um, we have seen like uh, if we use 3d printing so it's very easy and cost effective so this yes. is there and uh, i'm uh, really thank uh, thankful to you sir and uh, you have also pointed out that the wastages are re really low in 3d printing as you said so we have some questions from students so i would like to yeah. share with you please so the uh, first question is can we use 3d printing for nano scale uh, fabrication or prototype of carbon nanotube device uh, uh, using this fabrication yes uh, there are some technologies called nanoscribe is a mission uh, it is there in iit kanpur and people are able to uh, make uh, mems and all very small micro mechanical devices and all uh, people are able to make uh, you know small motors which are nano size you know so uh, it is possible actually so there are application and there are a lot of uh, challenges also you know when you create something at a nano scale uh, you need to counter the seismic uh, vibrations of earth okay so uh, when we want to build something big there are uh, big challenges right when you want to build something which is microscopic at nano scale also there are challenges okay and so uh, seismic uh, activity the vibrations uh, they play havoc when they actually print at nano scale you know even at micron scale also you need to have a table which is seismic proof that means like a gyro the table has to be protected from any kind of external vibration you know and so these are some challenges you know that uh, i think uh, uh, people are working and uh, applications are growing yes so now we'll take the next question it is yeah. like what type of materials have you used till now for 3d printing at your firm oh i think we have used more than about uh, some 300 different materials because uh, when i started uh, i was using only one material abs uh, in 2000 so uh, i got introduced to this technology in 90s okay and uh, in 93 i saw something 3d printed okay 93 in 2000 i was on hands on at iisc was actually making use of these uh, technology uh, building lot of things and uh, today we have a fleet of uh, uh, different technologies you know under one roof you know so it's a, a one stop uh, shop for innovators and makers and oems msmes and smes so we make things for uh, almost any kind you know people have come uh, requested we kept on telling okay why not we'll do this we'll do that so today uh, we have a concept of digital uh, material what is digital material you have a tank a and tank b in various proportions if i can mix material i can uh, have so many pellets of uh, you know uh, through permutation combination you can have different properties of material you know uh, from soft to hard from transparent to opaque you can have so polyjet is one uh, technology that offers this uh, digital material right and we have today bio compatible materials bio implantable materials 
we have materials which are uh, uh, skin friendly for infants and all and uh, uh, material which are food grade materials material which can be eaten like chocolates you know material which can be taken as a medicine you know uh, people and material like clay ceramic concrete and uh, we make it out of gold silver brass bronze copper titanium cobalt chrome carbon nano uh, uh, carbon uh, fibers peak and you have uh, uh, wood fill material and uh, you have uh, pla which is a starch material you know so a lot of such materials are available only thing is in bio plotting and printing uh, people are uh, still not been able to actually um, dis you know uh, uncover some of the uh, codes of god you know like uh, on, on a, a patri day i can actually have a self culture right yes sir but if i in a 3d printing what they do they make a scaffold and they want to put a hydrogel and they want to put the stem cells and all they want to see whether it grows and becomes a organ it doesn't do like that because okay. nature is all additive only nature is additive you know right sir you now we are all additive manufactured in mother's womb exactly right? sir right sir. we have bio bio camera we have a cpu you know and we have a thought box <laughs> right and we have a mic microphone or whatever you could call it as the like earphone you know all that and we have a pump which is hot and it is a composite material you know world is composite you know it is a it is called functionally graded material so uh, we are actually we are looking at nature as the uh, nature is the best designer so in additive manufacturing people are looking at nature and real world needs real material so the material pellet is increasing every day uh, today i agree it is not uh, some 30000 3 lakhs or 3 million such material is not there but it is growing when i was used to use only one material abs today we are able to use so many right and uh, they are also having classifications like high temperature material low temperature material bio material yes, sir. Bio degradable <laughs> material you know compatible, compatible material food grade material. material so we have variety of uh, material that is possible today yes okay so the next question is regarding uh, like uh, for 3d printing and chip layout printing for electronics So, is yeah. there any technology, sir, for that? Yes. yes. So, people have already done, demonstrated. Uh, there is a company called in Germany. I saw them. Um, they are called, uh, I think, Dragonfly. You know, Dragonfly, and they actually make uh, 3D printed uh, uh, PCBs. Today, it is possible to shoot component inside. You know. And the whole thing the several layers of uh, pcb can be built because it is like sandwich you know you okay, take a sa one, one uh, slice, slice put uh, a cheese there and uh, put another slice it can cheese sandwich suppose you put tomato there tomato uh, sandwich you, you put spinach it becomes spinach and i can also vary so the beauty of this technology is at every layer i can have a control right i can stack uh, electronics like uh, uh, for example leds or active material p and uh, you know electronics full up p and n material right top so material yeah only two two materials are there you know no. correct yes, no sir. so when they are stacked uh, you are able to have a pixel control or a voxel control when i am depositing the p material and the n material that decides you know uh, what kind of semiconductor i am uh, embedding inside you know and today with plsi and all people are able to do many things you know it's a very thin wafer which will have so many electronics hidden inside because of the very large system integration vlsi and the people are able to make a, a lab on chip you know lab on chip uh, you know like a smd and all uh, small surface mount devices which are like ic is uh, uh, like a small uh, drop of uh, Uh, resin you know uh, you would have seen uh, yes, how it is very very small and people are able to do that and that requires 
a special 3D printer now, in, you know, that is not open source because the challenges, as I said, are much different uh, in each technology, you know. Right. Hope I've answered your question. Yes, sir. Absolutely. So, like, uh, you have shown 3D printing. So, how yeah. do they make objects? I think they are asking for the software. One of the students, I think they have uh, put this question yeah. in the chat. You know, uh, yeah. software, you know, yeah. actually when people used to draw by hand, that was automated by what is now computer-aided drafting. You know, it was only drafted before. Then it became computer-aided design when they started uh, having uh, you know, capability to build solid models. And also, when you, once you make a solid model, it will have volume. So when you have a volume into a you know, specific weight, it will give you the weight of the object also. Right? So they are able to now have material library. So you can assign properties to the volumes. And so people started using that as a simulation model. You know, And uh, uh, the CAD was born. The small CAD and big CAD was born. Yes, and these CAD... When they are able to translate this into uh, some of the files uh, called G code, M code, uh, they could actually uh, send this message to a mission to build the part. The so called uh, NC and the CNC came. The NC and CNC use the M codes and G codes. Whereas in the case of uh, M code, is for the tools actually. In the case of 3D printing, we only use G-code because there is no tool, because uh, there is only one head which will dispense the material layer upon layer. We call it as a nozzle, no? A nozzle, which dispenses material. So that becomes only one tool. So uh, we, we do away with M codes in uh, 3D printing. A 3D printer can be called as a CNC machine. You know, it qualifies the definition. You know, only thing is it doesn't use M and G code. It uses only G code, you know. And so what they do, they take section at every uh, discrete uh, distance. And that is put to, given to a printer. What it prints, printer is also 2D only. There is no 3D there. Because right, you have right. a set, because it goes down or goes up, you're able to stack one above the other. And when you stack all of them, like integration, I know. I know integration. We all know a long yes, a expanded <laughs> S. You know, yes, sir. Uh, expanded S is integration. So when you have discrete parts which are put, you know, dt by dx, you know, n times that, you have a integration of that. And when you put them together, what you get is an object. And that's how uh, it is done in CAD. We also have something called as geometric modeling. You know. So they say a line was born because a point went for a walk. You know, a point, point went, went for a walk. It went straight and made a straight line. It danced and went, it made a curved line. You know, that's really great, great explanation. Uh, and, <laughs> and a line, when it is swept, you get a surface. And a surface, when it is extruded, you get a solid. You know, and when you make it hollow, it becomes a hollow thing. And that's how CAD actually was born, you know. So these are some of the fundamentals of what is known as geometric modeling. Okay, geometric modeling has uh, 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 things like uh, uh, you know the Bezier curves, and the C one C two continuity, and uh, the point, the control points, how they control the vectors, all that. They've gone behind to actually uh, we use CAD today without knowing all the, of them, what I discussed, are working in the background, you know. And uh, so CAD is, uh, in, in, notes, in its own way, I should take a special session on CAD. Because CAD is wonderful. Because without CAD, nothing you can make. 3D printer doesn't understand English. Yes, sir. You know? We'll look forward I, to it. Like, I, if we get another day, so we'll yeah. take up this CAD also, sir, with you, sir. Why, Why not? not? We'll do Yes, sir. So, and uh, there was a question like, uh, sir, can I make anything, uh, any type of thing I want uh, from 3D printing? <laughs> so, basically, it's like uh, generating this idea to... <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can do anything. 
इम्पॉसिबल थिंग्स ऑल्सो वॉट आप सोच भी नहीं सकते वो भी कर सकते हैं राइट सर and uh, so that's all for the questions and uh, there were many messages they have thanked you sir a lot and uh, it's my pleasure it's yes, my sir. pleasure really uh, so, thank you uh, abhijit bala for this wonderful opportunity uh, thank you sir ramchandra sir for this wonderful opportunity it's yes, my sir. pleasure i always love to uh, talk to uh, students and children because they are our future yes you know? sir and calcutta is a very important place where uh, the science is still living you know and uh, the pure science there used to be a lot of activity of science uh, you know roman uh, roman effect was also uh, discovered in uh, calcutta you know roman was working in calcutta and uh, you had great people like uh, jagdish chandra bose there you know in calcutta who who is now considered to be the real inventor of radio waves you know uh, J- uh, jagdish chandra bose and yes, uh, uh, we had so many great people including rabindran tagore so i wish you all of you uh, to contribute to this technology we'll also discuss your technology when you add it children you know because you are going to create uh, new technologies for not only for calcutta for india for the world wish you all the best okay, thank you sir for this wonderful opportunity and uh, thank you for getting connected to us and thank i you. thank uh, from all the students who were part of this session who were live through youtube thank you sir thank you a lot so fra- with this we would like to conclude the session namaste sir thank you